My name's John Delaney. I work in part the plastering team at Acton College. And um, basically what I'm going to show you in this video is how to run a panel moulding. And we'll be using this, which is a running mould, um, which we make ourselves. Um, they come in different shapes and sizes. Obviously I'm only just doing this panel, but we've got different running moulds. They can range from this sort of size So one's as big as this, or even bigger. So first of all, I'm going to grease the bench, so it helps the running mould slide along the bench, and obviously I can get the moulding off of the bench then as well. This type of plastering is fibrous plastering. So you want to make sure that the running rule's clean. Give the running mould a grease as well. So the running mould is made up of different parts. That's actually zinc, made from zinc, will cut out the shape of the profile what we want then it's obviously we have to horse it the process is called horsing up and we've got a slipper which slips along by the rule the zinc is mounted on the stock and then you've got bracing to hold it all together hold it square and housing blocks as well to firm it up so I'm just going to check that it's running along okay And I'm going to cut myself a piece of canvas for reinforcement. And I'm going to cut this at two metres. I'll just put that on the bench. I'll move the grease away. Right, I'm just going to go out of shot a bit, get myself a tub. Right, I'll get myself a tub, a clean tub, and I'm going to put some clean water in this tub. And I'm going to sort of judge how much plaster I think I'm going to need for this job. And I'm going to go for, say, two and a half bowls of water in this tub to run this piece of moulding. Well, I've got the water now, I'm going to mix the plaster, which is plaster of Paris, well, fine casting plaster. I'll just sprinkle the plaster in. So the idea is that you're waiting for islands to appear on the top of the water. So they just start appearing, that's when you know that the consistency of the plaster is going to be okay. So I'll just sprinkle it in.
So you can see the islands are just starting to appear. Go for one more handful there. Some people wear marigold gloves doing this, but you need to have to keep the feel of what you're doing. So I'd, 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 all I do is put grease on the hands. That's what I've done in workshops over the years. Just plenty of grease on the hands. Acts like a barrier. And then I'll mix the plaster. So you're looking for a sort of, like a double cream consistency. So I'll let all the plaster soak first of all. If you mix it up and there's dry powder on the top, you'll end up with lumps in it. So now it's a nice creamy consistency. First of all, I'm going to put some plaster on the bench to give me a guide of where I need to put the canvas. So I'm just going to squeeze it through my hand so there's no lumps. And it's just giving me a guide of where I can put my canvas there. So I'm going to soak the canvas in the plaster. that where the mould is going. And I'm just going to hook that over the bench there so it doesn't pull up when I'm running the moulding. through again, make sure that's not getting in the way anywhere. The canvas is not going to get caught on the running mold. Start putting the plaster on top of where I put the canvas and just start building up the plaster. Squeezing it through my hands so I don't get any lumps.
So I always need to keep this up against the rule, tight against the rule. So I'm sort of, and I'm cupping my hand there so that any plaster that comes out, I'm catching it and it's going back into where it needs to go. So pretty soon it will start, it's just starting to get a little bit thicker now, it's just starting to pick up a bit. Just get the running mold a little clean off. I have to clean the running mold down and just in case it gets a bit clogged up and interferes with the profile. But you have to be very careful of this zinc. You don't want to be rubbing your fingers over it too much in case you cut yourself. So just use a brush to clean it off. So you can see it starting to thicken up now, starting to go off. And as it's going off, then as I run the, the running mold down, it'll cut the shape into the plaster. So you can see it's just starting to form a shape there. Yeah. 
You can see it's getting a lot thicker. It's just starting to go off. So you can see the shape forming there. But the plaster's swelling all the time. So you need to keep it down and swell. So I'm not going to put anything on there at the moment, I'm just going to run it through again. So now really I'm just looking for where it needs to be built up. So it's starting to come together now. Like I said, the plaster is expanding all the time, so you need to keep that swell down. I'm just going to knock this back a little bit just to soften it up a bit and then put it on where it's needed.
So you can see it taking shape there. But like I said, the plaster is still swelling. I'm going to give this another run through, even though I've not put any more plaster on it. We'll just be cutting the swell down. Always make sure that the slip is tight against the rule. So I'm just looking to see if there's any little bits what need tidying up. So like now, I've not put any more plaster on there, but like I say, it's expanding, it's swelling the plaster. You can see it's still taking off stuff. So I'm just looking over it now to find out if there's any little misses, any little holes. Well, it's more or less getting there now. But what I might do is mix up another little bit of plaster, soft plaster. Just to give it a little bit of a polish up. Water. Very small amount of plaster there. Just the same thing again, just waiting for the islands to appear. Just 
give it another little run through. So like I say, it's still taking plaster off, it's still swelling. And this is just to fill in the little imperfections. So almost there. Checking over it, see there's nothing wrong. And that's basically it. Just let that dry for a little while and cut it to the size as needed. And that is running a panel moulding. Okay, we we're about to take the mould in front of, off of the bench there, but I'm talking to the people of making this film at the moment, and I've sort of noticed that there's a, an imperfection in the mould in there. There's a slight line, in, but it's and it's running all the way through, so that obviously tells me that there's something wrong with the zinc. So there must be a slight little nick on the zinc. So I'll have to have a look at if I'm making any more of these mouldings. I'd have to give that a little file down just to make sure there's, it's not going to affect it in future. But really now I'm just going to run a tool down the side. I'll, I'll use a bit of 
bit of busk just to cut off the excess. I'm just going to cut off the rough ends there as well. So just gently saw through it, don't be fighting it, let the saw do the work. And obviously where I've greased the bench, the waste comes off easy enough. I'm just going to, because it's only got a bit of canvas in it, this moulding, I mean it will come off the bench, but it's quite a long length. To carry around like this is quite delicate still. So, I mean, if I was casting something, I could have put like a bit more reinforcements or perhaps put a larve in it. But what I'm going to do, just to make it easier, more manageable, I'm just going to cut it in half and have it in two sections. So I'm just going to measure this now and cut it in half so it's easier to manage carrying it. And I've got two point four there, just over two point four meters. I'll get that at one point two. I'm just going to put a little mark there, a little nick. So now these will be a bit more easier to manage. There's a chance that a long length like that, you try to pick it up and it'll break. And find a place to put them. You want to stack them in a flat area, a flat clean area, because if you lay them somewhere that's bumpy or something, they're going to dry out, out of shape. So I'm just going to put these underneath the bench so they're out of the way. And then I could carry on making another one. Perhaps another thing what I should have done is make good the bench first of all before I started running. Because if you've got a lot of bumps and digs in the bench, it's going to affect the running. 
And what I noticed when I started running at last mile, then I was catching here, there was like a dig in the bench there and it kept some catching on it. So sometimes it's worth making good the bench before you start running. And you just clean up, get ready to run off again.